Yo, what's shaking, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff. That's Anwar. Do us a solid. Uh, like the video if we say something informative, clever, humorous, whatever. Uh, in addition to that, we would love for you to subscribe to the channel. We are creeping up on 8,000 subscribers to the channel. We have, I believe, over 1 million views so far this season, which sounds kind of cool. Uh, and ring the bell, get notifications, do all of that stuff. And by all means, leave comments in the comment section on war today. We wanted to piggyback on part of a conversation that took place yesterday, which was Steve Sarkeesian declaring pretty openly, uh, I can see us with 33 new scholarship players on an 85 man roster. Part of what we talked about yesterday was that comment reflecting the rebuilding job that suddenly exists that 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 comment basically was a white flag on the idea that add water instant championship program like now this is about building something bigger um and he went into great detail to really outline 33 out of 85 is a is a, a fairly large number on one of the things, though, that I wanted to explain and us to really talk about in this video is truly the how mechanism for 33 as opposed to 25 and the rules that actually will allow Texas to get to 33. So I don't even know if you know this. So let me, if you don't know, tell you what happened. On October 6th, the NCAA's D1 Council created an emergency rule and it allows teams that lose players in the through the portal to take as many as 32 new incoming players in the upcoming 2022 school like athletic year now when they released the rule they essentially said we're going to do more than this but we don't know what that is so this is what you get for now it was just a little bit of a buffer for teams who were like, we're screwed if you don't let us take more than 25. So they were like, we got to let people take more than 25, but what if some school tries to take 50? Because for whatever reason, there was a mass exodus. Would we really allow that to happen? That's what the NCAA is trying to figure out right now is what is this magic arbitrary number that we'll be willing to allow schools to take advantage of if worst case takes place and you lose a bunch of dudes. For now, the arbitrary number that they've selected is 32. Now, what's interesting about this number is that they specified in the rules that you can only go up to 32 for players that enter the portal by December 15th of this year. So basically, if this had existed a year ago, almost all of the portal entries that the Longhorns had occurred in January and February. That, you know, that was the real peak season for portals. They've created this rule only for portal players that enter before National Signing Day, which is five weeks away. So you can take 32 and you can take them at any point, any way you want to. But the, the, the guys in the portal have to have gone into the portal by December 15th. It's a weird little tricky rule because here's what it means. In a, in a world where the Longhorns can take in 25, they currently have four guys that have entered the portal transfer portal since August 15th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they would be able to replace four. Texas needs three more players to enter the portal in the next five weeks so that they can take advantage of the full seven. And then at that point, you'd have 32, and then you can distribute those 32 however you want to. Texas and Sark said 33 yesterday because they will move one scholarship back to this past year because they only took 24 this past mm -hmm. year. So it gives them an extra scholarship. So 26 plus seven, you're at 33 with some ifs. Now, I've, I just explained all of that. And I'm like, shit, 
That's going to be confusing. Is it explained well enough that people watching the video will understand how you get to 33? No, I think I think you you explain that that portion of. I think the only question I would have is what happens if a guy goes into the portal in April after spring ball? Like, They've made no rules for that. Okay, okay. So when Sark said 33 and he said, I can see us with 33, he knows the math. There will be three more players come hell or high water that enter the portal before December 15th because there are there is no NCAA legislation that accounts for players lost in January, March, February, April, May. You know, though at this point, they haven't figured out what they're doing with that. But okay. you can take 33 if you've got seven guys who've entered the portal essentially during the season. Texas is at four. And they'll need three more. The interesting thing about this is, so we know that Texas has 33 to play with in Sark's mind. I think this is the real interesting conversation that you and I are about to have. They've got 22 total commitments, right? Mm -hmm. One of those will get moved to last year. So technically they've got 21. So they've got 12 open scholarships that they know they'll be able to use. How they split that up among high school students and transfers is up to Texas. Texas, if Texas got no more five star, let's say everybody in the rec- that they're going after in recruiting said no. Okay. They don't have to sign any more high school dudes. Like they could say 12 portal guys right now. That's our number. It's a huge number. They could take 10 more high school guys and leave themselves with only two spots to take guys out of the transfer portal so the question is with 12 scholarships to play with if you're steve sarkeesian how are you breaking those down what's how are you breaking that number down by because i wrote a column last week that said texas could really do with 10 transfers if they could make that happen quarterback receiver three offensive linemen, two defensive linemen, a linebacker, two DBs. That doesn't even include a kicker. <laughs> like mm-hmm. they can use some, some experienced guys that can come in and play. So the ball I want to put on the tee for you is what's your gut instinct? Just as we have this conversation for this program, what the right mix should be with 12 that he knows he has to work with. I think he's got to go more, more, whatever the percentage is, it has to lean more towards transfer portal than it is, you know, the scholarship guys. I think catch me, it's clear that they feel like maybe they don't have the talent that they, they, they need here at Texas because what did Sarkeesian say on Monday? These guys haven't forgotten a coach. You know, he still views them as elite coaches. So that means he feels like there's probably more of a talent issue. And as he talks about the new influx of talent, but I think catch in this rebuild that we're you know currently in, you still got to find a way to put together some wins if you're Sarkeesian in year two. And I don't think you can say we're going to go ahead and go from whatever this number ends up being that we're in and with two games left. I don't think you can say, all right, let's incrementally move this up to six next year or move it to seven. And then hopefully we can get to eight in year three. And then by year four, Texas fans will lose their ever loving minds if that ends up being the case. So you, he's, I think he's got to go in, catch, and he's got to say, okay, this guy's got to develop, but you, you do need to win now. And yeah. you do need to win with the top. Like, you can't, when you start talking about the need for, you know, probably improving the offensive line, you've got one more year of Bijan, you know, and he's, he, he's done. He's done. If Casey Thompson is your, is your quarterback next year, you probably he's probably thinking like if he can do one more year at Texas, he's probably out. He's got two, but he's does one more year, then maybe he's out. Jordan Winnington, he seems like he's been here forever, but he'd be a senior after next next season. You 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 start starting to realize like next year 
is from an offensive standpoint, is probably the year that you really want to get things knocked out uh, before you start, you know, figuring out who you're going to start, you know, next year. So the following years after that, I think there's there's still got to be a rebuild and people will be okay, catch, and, and they'll wrap their minds around in the spare. All right. They'll get excited because there's new guys who are coming in and what these new guys can do. The same way everyone was excited about the, the transfer portal guys who were supposed to come in previously, right? But then after that, though, you you got, look, catch, they play UTSA next season and Bama next season. God forbid you lose both of those. I mean, so you, you've got to find a way to put up wins now. So I, I think more transfer portal uh, than developmental guys. Yeah, I, I'll i go one step further and just say the three stars for the, the recruiting class the rest of the way, that needs to be retired. That mm-hmm. if it's not one of these truly nationally elite players that Texas is recruiting, right? The Devin Campbells of the world and the Evan Stewart's and uh, Harold Perkins, right? I mean, there, there are like a, a dozen guys that they are in on that are no doubt about it. They're Xavier worthy level talents at their positions. Uh, it remains to be seen whether or not they would be Xavier worthy, but like that's the level of recruit that we're talking about. That kind of guy. If it's not one of those type of players, save it, save it for a transfer. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the number is because I wouldn't want to say, well, you can't take Harold Perkins because you got to sit. You know what I mean? Like there's a level of high school prospect that you have to take, but if it's not one of those, they need, they need to save it for the portal. And I don't know that I would feel good with having less than eight Mm -hmm. portal spots. Like, I don't know what the magic number is somewhere in between this 12 where it's like, you sign four or five star level prospects and then use the rest on the portal. Okay. I just know that my shopping list for the portal is big yeah. that it's it. So and if you take eight, if you take four more high school guys, it makes the selection process of, cause all those right quarterback wide receiver, Three offensive linemen, two defensive linemen, one linebacker, two DBs. Like, I'm trying to be thrifty here, right? But if you take four uh, high school prospects, the math on that says you got to take two of what I just said out. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're not improving the wide receiving core if you can't? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they could use some help right now, right there. Does that mean you don't take a linebacker or you don't take – an edge player, like those are concessions that I don't want to make from the shopping list that I just gave out. So it will really be, it might be as simple as it's either Harold Perkins or we take a linebacker in the portal. It's either we take three offensive linemen in the portal or Devin Campbell takes one of those slots. Sure. Which we know Sarkeesian has said he wants to take five guys in this class. He has never completely specified that the five have to be high school players. Mm -hmm. Because I think when he had that conversation a couple of weeks ago, we wondered if it was five and then taking some guys in the portal, if they miss out on the majority of their, let's say all of their offensive line targets, they're going to the portal. The issue then is, would they take three? Would they take four? It remains to be seen, but the, how they plan this strategically might be the single most important thing that Steve Sarkeesian does in this entire offseason. Well, yeah, because he's got to start building towards success, right? I mean, like this, this is, if you, if it's getting stripped down and again, how we, how we got here that everyone can debate that. Well, we just know we're here at this point. So we don't, that point, that's, that's different podcasts, right? It's yeah. a different YouTube video. Um, he's got to then, figure out, all right, yeah, you got to build, you got to build, you got to get this thing going. But I'm curious though, Catch, when you, you, you talked about the maybe bringing in a quarterback, and I know you've said this multiple times, what's the pitch to a quarterback to come in that would potentially back up Hudson or Casey 
and whoever's here, right? We're, we're, we're assuming maybe one potentially leaves, right? I, I think we're, we're what, what's the, what do you tell that person? Like, hey, come here and to be the backup? I mean, when you know- I think, there are, I think there are multiple recruiting pitches and it simply depends on the player that we're talking about. For okay. instance, if it's, and look, in my world, at least one of these dudes transfers. So mm-hmm. what text- when I talk about Texas bringing in a quarterback, it's under the guise at least they're going to need somebody to be a backup. Now, the good news is there are quarterbacks. I mean, I followed it pretty closely last year with starting level experience that kind of find out there aren't a lot of chairs in the, in the, in, in you know, whatever that game we used to, the, you know, musical or, chairs. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of dudes that ended up without chairs. Mm-hmm. So, by the end of the year, if you need a depth guy, there actually are depth guys available where you could say, hey, come be our, come compete for the starting job, be a backup. At least you're at a major conference instead of slumming it. And a lot of dudes were slumming it by the end of last year. Guys that have played and started in a lot of games. Sure. Um, if it's Quinn Ewers, you're telling him you're the starter. If It's a certain level of guy that has started um, at the high D1 (laughs) level and and they're in the portal. Spencer Rattler, let's just say him, for example. You tell Spencer Rattler, you come in, you'll be our starter. Like, Mm -hmm. we're telling you. We wouldn't bring you in any other way. And you like, you really give him the pitch that you're the starter. If it's a guy that's not at that level, you're probably then telling them, You're competing for the starting job, but we hate our returning options based on the way that that played. So don't freak out about somebody coming back from last year because we're literally coming to get you because we're not happy with what we've got coming back. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of crap on the dude that's coming back to some degree. Like, did you see, you know what I mean? Like, you're recruiting. You do what you got to do. You, you you talk out of both sides of your mouth. Uh, you would then tell whoever stays behind, like, hey, we're just bringing this guy in for depth because we've got to replace the other guy. Like, you're always doing this thing. Mm-hmm. So I think that, and look, if, if let's say they both transferred out and then you got to do two guys. Mm-hmm. But let's say one of them's like Quinn Ewers, well, so then you've got your definitive number one guy. Now you're probably recruiting one of these guys at the bottom tier of what available division one quarterbacks with experience are. And you're probably saying, we may not want this guy to play right away. We need somebody to bridge the gap between him and this season. And you'll have every opportunity to be the starter because you've got experience and the other guy doesn't like, it's just a matter of saying what you need to say to try to get, the girl to give you that your phone number, um, you know, whether that works or not, that remains to be seen easier for me to tell you the line of speeches that I would try. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know that that means that miles Brennan comes from LSU without a certifiable commitment and without the landscape looking a little bit different because his options, he may have safer options in terms of high profile program, who doesn't have even a Casey Thompson or a Hudson card to compete with, you know, I just knowing the way that Sark talked about Casey Thompson yesterday, I think they're shopping in the portal for a quarterback. Now they may not get the guy that ultimately changes the playing field for them, but they're going to look. So the last thing I'll say, and this will kind of be one of my last thoughts on it catch, you know, Sarkeesian said something yesterday when we started talking about like the tiers kind of the buy-in levels, like one, two, and three. I got to imagine those people in the three, when they get to sit down with Sarkeesian after the season and he starts telling every player, here's what I think about you, here's your future here, this and that. Get the feeling those people in the threes, he's going to tell, you might want to think about going somewhere else. Anwar, he needs three to go before December 15th. Yeah. Like, and on some level, it is not going to matter who those three are. If you're in... The threes, mm-hmm. you got to go. Correct, and you and you show them the door, right? You, if you're Sark, you're like, man, you didn't buy in. 
I heard you chuckling in the back of, you know, of our conference room and stuff like that, man. I it know you don't want to be Davis your- video in perspective when Bo Davis is like, get your ass in the portal. Hey, to yeah. take 33, they got to lose three more. So yeah, they're probably, let me just put it to you like this. We will be do, we will be reporting on at least three more pieces of attrition for before the next five weeks, before signing date, based on no other reason than the NCAA rules tell us that if Texas wants to take 33, they better have seven guys go into the portal by December 15th, and they're at four. Simple as that. So basically, Bo Davis is going to tell some MFers to get the hell out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the help out of here. I just wonder... What the the I wonder what the countdown clock is before they have to push the red button and literally tell some dudes get your ass in the portal. When's the K State game? That <laughs> Monday like, after the K State. If it's got to be December fifteenth, if you get to December first and you still got to get rid of two guys, do you hit the panic button or do you wait another week? Nah, you you have that game on, on Friday. <laughs> Everybody gets back and you set up meetings for that upcoming week. And you say, I like you. I like you. You're all right. You can figure out. Okay. You can go. 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 No, I don't want you here. Sark knows who his threes are. He does. And for the next five weeks, the threes are going to know their threes. (laughs) Yes. Daily. Daily. Yes. Uh, And those guys guys that they're smart, they jump in the portal while they have options as opposed to waiting around. So, sometimes catch, you know, they, so they tell you sometimes it's better to wait to get fired uh, before you, in, instead of quitting. And sometimes it's better to just quit and take your best options than opposed to waiting to get fired. Early bird gets the worm. Exactly. I'm just saying. <laughs> and look, Sark ain't going to fight it either. He's going to let them threes leave. He won't care after the three, right? At that point, what's done, is he's done what needs to be done. But until then... Uh, it is something to keep an eye on. Look, for myself and Anwar Richardson, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you watching. We'll talk to you later in the week. You guys be good to each other. Later.